Hey everybody, uh, so this is one of those times where you really don't feel like making a video. Uh, you know, whatever, it's part of the vlog, isn't it? It's part of trading or copy trading. <clears throat> All right, here's the portfolio. So, as you can see, there's Choco in, uh, doing fairly well, sort of roughly the same. Uh, there's Almayaf, he's doing well, isn't he? He's up at 20.37. Quick look at his trades. Uh, oh look, AU, AUD, USD seems to be down a bit. From where it was yesterday. The other ones, he's sort of, you know, he, he's been doing better. He's sort of uh, quite stable. He's doing well. Baral up at uh, 597. He's got a little ripple trade open, which is losing a little bit, but he made that money back. Remember, he was down in the last video and he was doing kind of okay. Uh, here's Olivia Danville. Whoa, he's down, down 460. Now, I'd be worried about Olivia Danville being down 460. He's got a bunch of trades which are open and they're all sort of going against him. Uh, I think this is the first time um, poor Olivia has... Whoa, he's got half a percent loss. He's got the first bit of red in the otherwise sea of green. Now, those that trade with Olivia, that would be worrying me. I'd be concerned if it wasn't for this man here. <laughs> the, the man who so far this month has been just absolutely rip-roaring through it and making the vast majority of the profits has lost a third of all the profits he has made for me so far in a single day. Uh, there we are, there's Citadel Point, um, at the moment, minus 1705 on a couple of AUD USD trades. Remember that one that Alnaf had open, which I said had gone down quite a lot since yesterday. So there we are, there's minus 1458 on that, minus 247 on the other small one, which he opened up. Um, he's basically bet, uh, bet, wrong word, he's basically, he's, he's put all of the money he had or I'd invested with them on that single instrument, on Australian dollar, US dollar. Uh, if we go to AUD, USD, um, we can see that it's down three quarters of a percent today. All right, so if I go to the chart, and now I'm laughing, well, I'm not laughing, that's, that's terrifying. Look at this. All right, so each one of these, what are we representing? One day. So look, it had sort of gone down, remember, it hit lows. It's been going down for ages, all right? So AUD, USD. Whoa, huge drop. That's 2018, for God's sake. That's the beginning of 2018. Look at it going all the way down. Went up a bit, all the way down, all the way down. It, it had hit sort of a, a low here, um, and then it had started to go up again. And so from the 7th of March, it's been going up. Almayef has been recouping those huge losses. It's been going up. Now, around here somewhere, um, uh, Citadel Point decided to put a huge uh, buy trade on. Even though it just hit the 200 moving average, but he's really into fundamentals. I'm not sure if he really pays much attention to technical analysis. I'm sure he does because the man's a, he's, he's very smart. But it did hit the 200 moving average. Look, it hit it there and went down. I mean, you know, technical analysis, possibly a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, so many people believe in it that it moves the market. I have no idea, but it had hit it. But either way, he decided to open a new buy and it's just gone against him. That's one day. That's Friday, I guess, and that or Monday, and that is that's that's today. There we are. Look at that. Look, that's a rather sizable drop there, and he's holding on to it. He's still got it open now. Um, and obviously, this is terrifying. What do you do? Um, th there's part of me when I saw he had opened it with a hundred percent of the money that I'd invested with him, or close to it, and then he opened that smaller one and made it up to hundred. I thought about just closing it there and then. Not too much risk. Just close it. I'm copying him with ten percent of my portfolio. I want a stable portfolio. He's lost 1%, over 1%, or about 1% of the entire value of my portfolio in a day. So I've got, what, 1,714. Um, uh, uh, so today I have lost, between him and Olivia's unfortunate trades, 1.17% uh, today. My statistics are gone. 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 So if I look at my stats at the moment, um, I'm up 1.36 for April. So given that, I'm going to be up 16% for April. If this um, point 16%, 0.16%, 16%, 0.16%, I'll be up for April. But if it doesn't go down further, which honestly it looks like it will. So if I go back to AUD USD, to be honest, um, this is not fundamental analysis, this is not macroeconomic factors. You see, now, I've read his post about this. So, uh, Olivia, not Olivia, sorry, um, Citadel Point did actually 
write a post about this trade because he knew that it was a risky trade or that some people might not be prepared to take as much risk on this trade as as he took. Um, so here we are. Uh, well, it's a big position, so I feel it's just fair that I update copiers. Realistically, I'd have been happier if I had just closed it there, but I left it open because I trust him, you know. But it's a lot. Instead, well, you know, instead of putting a quarter of the assets on, or a third, or a fifth, or all of it, it's more trade than I'm kind of com uh, risk than I'm kind of comfortable with. But I've left it open. It's on me if I've left it open. Um, the main reason I have this position on is that I feel there is a strong disconnect between pricing and fundamentals. So the actual factors that go into evaluating an asset and the actual current market pricing. He thinks it's it's out of it, there's a disconnect there, which makes it worth trying to fade the bearish trend. The bearish trend, no, stay away, it's, it's going to go the other way. Economic data, bad, ex bad explanation. Economic data for Australia, AUD, it's the Australian dollar by the way, has improved and exceeded survey expectations for all of April now, be it the inflation data on 1st of April, the housing market data on 2nd, retail sales on 3rd, or the employment data last week. Also somewhat more sanguine data from China in April. Sanguine. Bad. More confidence, bad explanation today, it's, it's panic. More confidence that RBA, um, Royal Bank of Australia, I don't know, won't be cutting rates. Yes, the central bank won't be cutting rates in the very near term with, the, with these economic data, which does not make it more dovish than the Fed, whereby now market is expecting the next step, step to be a cut as well. So he's saying that they, the uh, US is more likely to cut interest rates than um, Australia. As far as I can see, uh, so he's saying it's all it's all good. You know, it should be good. Commodities, by and large, are bullish. Hard to see what's holding the Australian dollar um, back right now. Possibly we need to see some more decent economic releases for this train to start rolling. Feels a bit like the knock uh, did in late December. He did well off that um, Norwegian krona. Uh, difference between selling euro knock. Here he's talking about how there's going to be fees if he holds this trade open. Um, I am a bit more impatient with this pavement. The fundamentals look great. Uh, I'm definitely willing to give it a week or two if necessary. Oh my god, like the nerves, will my nerves be able to handle this? So what he's saying is that, alright, so the trade's going down. Now I asked him, have you got any fixed idea, this is yesterday, any fixed idea on how much drawdown on this specific trade you're willing to tolerate? How much are you going to risk before you cut this trade off? He says, given that it's a high conviction, fundamentally driven trade for me, uh, 1 to 1 1.5% in unlevered terms would not make me uncomfortable personally. So we've lost 0 0.73 on it. Not we've lost, it's gone down 0.73% today. And about, we've lost basically around 1% now since kind of yesterday. Um, so we're around that, but he says 1 to 1 1.5. Um, otherwise, it would obviously, uh, he says, to make me uncomfortable personally. He won't be uncomfortable with 1 to 1.5% 1 loss. Uh, which I don't think we'll get to, otherwise I would take it off and wait for a lower entry. That's the question. Why not just sell it, wait, or close the trade earlier, wait till it goes down and buy again when it's low if you believe it's strong. This is why he's saying he, he doesn't believe it will go that low. He fully appreciates that some copiers might not be comfortable with that. I encourage everyone to, of you to evaluate what you think of the fundamentals yourself, which is why I shared them. So these, he shared his fundamental analysis, and he's saying if, if you don't know any better, be quiet or stop copying me. And if you look at the fundamentals and you know better, please tell me, I think is what he's trying to say there. So, we just said thanks. But there we are. So, uh, Australian dollar, US dollar. What are people saying? Down 0 0.70 today at the moment. So, the next big resistance now, uh, support, sorry. So, a line which will stop it going down and it might bounce off is known as a support line. If it's above where you are and you might bounce off it and go down, it's known as resistance, support and resistance. And like old resistance lines, once you get through them, they now become support lines. Really basic technical analysis there. Study technical analysis. There's loads of videos on YouTube that you can learn. But anyhow, and some people don't really believe in technical analysis at all. Other, others think it's the be-all and end-all. He's driven by the fundamentals. I've heard it said that realistically, 70% fundamentals, 30% um, technical analysis is quite a good split. Using technical analysis to time the entry into a trade Whereas the fundamental analysis is really to determine whether you think it's a good trade and which direction it's going to go. Again, not a professional, just an amateur. You can study this stuff. It's all over YouTube. It's all over Investopedia, Baby Pips, lots of stuff to study. But the next support, so a price that it's likely to hit 
and have a slightly harder time going down through is around here, 70, 0 0.7070. This one, because you see the line hits here and here and here and around here. And then if you, if you go over, if you follow this line, see it bounces off it here, bounces off it here, bounces off it ish here. And then if you keep going back, uh, it also bounces off it further to the left here. You see, it's what stopped it. It was resistance, and now it's become support. So this number here is quite a big one. Tomorrow, apparently, uh, so that number just about there, somewhere there-ish, around here. So what I'm doing is I, I expect that it might retest that thing, and if it's going to get through that, then we've got real trouble, but I'll wait to see, and I'm leaving it open, and sort of trusting that Mr. Citadel Point does know what he's talking about. And if it does lose too much money, he'll stop it. He won't just be consumed by pride, or like stubbornness, uh, which are enemies of traders. It's very easy to become like, you know, mm, I know best and full of pride or stubbornness. I will hold on. I, I've done that and lost money doing it. And I don't think he'll do that. Um, so I think also tomorrow there is new uh, Australian economic data coming out, which might um, uh, change the way this is moving or change market sentiment. Um, so this is Australian dollar against US dollar. For whatever reason, people are sort of... Um, seeing the US dollar at the moment apparently is a bit of a safe haven. So money's pouring into the US dollar. I don't know how. What are they, 20 trillion, 17 trillion in debt, and still that's a safe haven? It, I don't know. It just, just sort of shows you how, how bad the rest of the world must be. I don't know. Anyhow, so I'll leave it to him though. Citadel Point is the is the um, is the guy I'm I'm trusting on this, and it's sort of it's hit that low. It's gone up, and now it's retracing, but very heavily. I mean, that's a sharp sell-off. But about as sharp as this. We'll see where it goes, but I'm leaving it open at the moment. Um, there's what? There's about eight days, seven days, one week till the end of the month. So this might ruin my stats for the month, but um, I don't want to close a trade, which he may be able to turn around and sort of make back those profits. He is obviously a clever guy, and he's, he's you know, analyzing, and hopefully if it does lose too much, he, he'll, he'll cut it off, you know. Um, and then reopen it at a lower price and make the money back. But that's where we are at the moment. The rest, they're doing okay. This is just a shock. It's a shock. It's not nice, you know. I mean, this was the reason that I wanted to sort of reduce him to a smaller amount of the portfolio, to sort of, you know, 5% or 3%. Because his appetite for risk, he's willing to take more risks than I am, than I want to. I get nervous faster than Citadel Point. He's got the nerves of steel, and I just want a quieter life, is the truth at the moment. And sort of stability and consistency. So really it's sort of reiterating that at the moment I, I will, I think, try and reduce him to 3 to 5% of the portfolio. When I need more money to do it, second I get more money, it's going in, and that's what I'm going to do. I don't care, all you people saying copy in with more, although you're not really, I'm sure you get it. Um, but there we are, poor Olivia Danville, it's not, not going so well, but look at it, the, I mean the loss, 0.45%, still a very small loss, so I'm still happy with that. Um, I spoke to him this week for that, for that video, very nice guy, spoke to him on Skype from Paris, um, really nice fella, um, thanks for doing that if you've seen this Olivia, and uh, I wish them all well, you know, and that's it, thanks uh, Lawrence, I think it's Lawrence, another Patreon, another patron on Patreon that I got. Um, at the moment, I'm in a bit of shock, I'll be honest. Today, to, to be losing that much today, 1.05%. It's gone down a bit since the beginning of the video, but to be losing that in a day, it's a shocker. And you just have to, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting, not panicking. If they, they will make it back. They will make it back. These people are good. I look at their statistics over time. I'm willing to wait, but it's, it's not a nice experience, is it? It's like, ah, oh. but you know, um, I'll leave them for now. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope everything's going great and you had a good Easter. Happy Easter, belated. Um, I got over 10,000 subscribers. Thanks to everyone for subscribing. Um, I got a little graphic made, which I'm going to put at the bottom of the screen. I don't know which side it's going to be on somewhere. Uh, a little subscribe thing. Just a little subscribe and a little bell comes out. I had it made on Fiverr. Fiverr's pretty awesome. I got it made for like $12. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it or if it'll help, but there we are. Is my little graphic and uh, hope you guys are well. See you.